to where the very, very historical period, <coughs> the historical period where Speaker of the Assembly has just been found guilty of extortion, of fraud. We now have the Speaker of the Senate, Dean Skelos, who's about to be found guilty of fraud, uh, extortion. Uh, and we have politicians who basically have followed Shell Silver and Skelos for many years, and that's the type of politics, pay for play politics is what controls our whole community. Uh, and we are a historical moment where this group, the campaign for Latino representation, which is not just here in the Bronx, it's in the, all over, can begin to really turn politics around in New York City. Okay? We have uh, a mayor who says he's progressive and yet he believes in broken windows. He believes in black and Latino residents of their communities being treated differently than whites in their community and instead being subject to zero tolerance and to incredible uh, racism in, in, the, in, the, in the policing. We see the, uh, a mayor who says we need affordable housing, but his plan is not about affordable housing. So we, we, we have a historical moment where we can begin to play an incredible role uh, in terms of bringing the whole focus of this group. Campaign for Latino representation began when there was no Latinos being appointed by the Blasio. We, uh, the campaign pushed and pushed for a meeting with the Blasio. The Blasio ignored other people like Scott Stringer and met with the group. The group has become, got more and more publicity, more and more powerful. And at, uh, once one, the campaign then reaches another level today, and it's not just meeting here, it's meeting in other places, by saying it's not enough to have Latino faces in, in positions of power. We need Latino, progress, a Latino progressive agenda. If you put a Latino in power, but he does the same thing, that the other person was doing, there's no difference. If you put a police commissioner uh, in charge of police, but he believes in broken windows, well, there's no difference. We need to have a progressive policy. What do we, what, is that enough? Like Professor Quito says, if you have that, the, the absence of a policy is a policy. It means that you're supporting the existing policy. We need to develop our own policy in terms of policing, in terms of pro, in terms of healthcare, in terms of education, and this small group combined with other groups that are taking place and so on is eventually we're gonna we're gonna have a CY conference with all the different groups. Today the input from the Bronx, what do we think should be the policy, like your policy in terms of these issues? After today, in January we meet CY, and then after CY. One week before Del Blasio makes his State of the Union message, we make our State of the Union message about what we think should be the policy of New York City. So you hear, we're here with some incredible organizers. I, I, see, I see the jobs manager just came in, one of the uh, great young people organizing around police misconduct. We have a lot of other folks here who organize in their particular area. Uh, so I hope. Uh, it's it's going to be an exciting day. There's more and more people going to be coming during, during the course of the day. And the thing is, for today, a policy. What is our policy? What is our agenda? How, what, what do we believe in? What do we want? <coughs> it's all, if this is what we can do today. This is our role today. And I hope everybody stays with us till 2 o'clock. <coughs> it helps us build this agenda, this policy. And thank you.